right, we're back. Thank you, Bob and Bill. And we're talking about the uh, well, Obamacare. Yeah. All right, you want to give us an Is update? The su of Supreme Court. Yeah. Uh, well, it wasn't it wasn't a couple of days ago. It was last Thursday. Last Thursday. Came out with their opinion on the Patient Protectable Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. And it, it shocked everybody. I think the, the, the news leaked out somehow that uh, Chief Justice Roberts was going to write the opinion, so everybody said, it's over. Yeah. And you told me that yeah. Fox News had headlines ready to blast that it had been overturned. Well, it was actually on, as was CNN. They both, both of the networks on either side of the Before political spectrum, ready. right, right and left, they had it flashed up on the screen. Both of them had the same erroneous conclusion on the screen because they wanted to be first, even though it was first with exactly the wrong news. Both of them, yeah, Fox credit for being first. and CNN. Oh, that's what they wanted. They wanted to, oh, we got it up first, we got it up first, okay. we got it first and we're wrong. Well, it help, help me idea. describe basically what happened. Right. Most of the act was upheld. The individual mandate was yes. upheld. Yes. The way it was upheld is very, very interesting. But the part that was not upheld was this provision. The Medicaid is a state-federal partnership. Medicaid basically provides uh, medical services to poor people. And the states pay some, and the federal government pays some, and the states get to set some yeah. of the parameters. Well, the federal government was going to increase Medicaid coverage to 133% of the poverty line. And the, the states had to contribute to that. And the federal government was going to send a lot of money down. Uh, but if they didn't, then the federal government was going to pull all their Medicaid money. And, of course, their, the, 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 the citizens of those states would still have to send their tax money up to fund Medicaid in other states. Now, that, the Supreme Court said, was wrong. They can't do that. They and can't they, use that punitive yeah. part of it. So the states now have the option of saying no. Governor Scott said on behalf of Florida that's what he wants to do. It looks like Texas is heading toward no. Well, yeah, Mississippi Mississippi is going to be a no. They can't afford it. So the central thing about the act was to provide more coverage for low-income people. That's not going to work in a lot of low-income states. It's, it's just... You want to know why it's wrong? You want to know why the opinion's why wrong? Why the opinion's wrong? Right. Yeah. I'm going to Justice uh, Ginsburg. Justice Ginsburg. Uh, Dissent, which I think is really the scholarly part of the opinion, for whatever that's worth. I think you have agree other with smart people that were up there writing, you know, but she really is a scholar. And she said that's just an absurd argument, and here's why. That they could have just said, Medicaid is repealed, and this is Medicaid too. <laughs> Obligatory, okay? There's no way no, around okay. that. No, there's got yeah. to be a limit. In this federal system, the, the, the federal government is allowed to partner with states to do certain things. They the aren't. federal government can't run its whole program of running everything just with the enormous federal you know government. What? They've they already filled up Washington. But you know what? They could do that. No, they couldn't. On Medicaid, they absolutely could have. It could have been on, an, a 100% on, federal program if they wanted oh, it. Oh, yeah, if they wanted if it. If they wanted it, it but they made it. It could have been a 100% federal right. program. Right. But to, to, to coerce the state, to, to invite the states to participate, is one thing. To coerce the states is to destroy federalism. And I agree with that part of the opinion. Well, that's, but you see, they didn't, the they didn't the, declare Medicaid unconstitutional. That analysis no, should they, say it's unconstitutional no, across the board. what they declared unconstitutional was the part of the Affordable Care Act that said if states yeah. do not sign on to this expansion right. of Medicaid, right. we're pulling all the Medicaid money. But, but they could have said we're repealing Medicaid and we're, we're adopting Medicaid II, which is the new provisions. And the states would have been, have been obligatory. The states would have have to have done it if they wanted the federal the, match the money. The point of the majority is I know what the that, point is. Right. States they made it obligatory. Yeah. They made at it, at uh, some point, it becomes coercion. At some point, it becomes overreaching. The federal government has done this for years. You have to raise your drinking age to 21, or else we'll pull all the highway that's, money. That's it. And they get closer and closer. So, so by the means of taking your money up there and giving it back only if, we become more and more a unitary government. This is supposedly a federal system where the states have some control. Well, on those two points, they could have said Medicaid will be a federal program. That's it. The states are not involved anymore. We're going to set the criteria. They could have done that. There was one other thing they, they added, by the way, you know, in the, in the revision of the Medicaid, was this. 
that if you were under 65 mm -hmm. and you met the poverty level, then you would be included in the Medicaid population. Anybody. See, that's not true now. Now it's unwed mothers. There's a category of oh, people. Oh, that's right. And that's right. So they added a new person. The yeah. idea was this, that if the states, and the, by the way, the federal government offered all of the money, what, for several years, right? And then the most they're ever going to pay is 90 percent. All right. The most they, the most the, the states pay now is 85 percent. So in the end, they were going to be better off. Yes, it would be more money, but a huge mm -hmm. portion of the states needy would be yeah. covered. OK, but the, but the point of this is yeah. whether you like it, whether it's good or bad, it's that level of coercion. We're pulling money from something else. It clearly is. It's clearly that level of coercion. And back to back. And I, th to, and I think that's wrong. Back to the health care bill. The government, the United States government could have said. We're going to have a national single-payer system. Yeah. Done. Been, there's no question. Done and over. No question the United States can do that. That would no. be far better than we've got what we've got now, which is re this ridiculous mismatch of, of hidden taxes and pork and bread. To get it done, everybody got their needs met. The insurance companies, which are not acting like insurance companies anymore, no. if you can't underwrite, if you can't decide, well, I'm going to charge you more and you less, then really you're just clerks and administrators. They are clerks and administrators, and the states are going to have these exchanges, right, set up right. where anybody can right. go and get right. coverage. It, it, and I think the, the, what is addressed in these opinions is this is the, the number of people, the number of people involved, and this, was, this did come from the dissent, but I don't think it's, there's any dispute about the number of people actually involved. And I really was surprised, Bill, in terms of the staggering number. Let me just go to the beginning of this opinion. And tell you, in 2009, approximately 50 million people were uninsured, either by choice mm -hmm. or more likely because they could not afford private insurance and did not qual qualify for government aid. As a group, uninsured individuals annu annually consume more than $100 billion in health care services, nearly 5% of, the, of yeah. the nation's total. It's a problem that needs to be addressed. We have no dispute about that. Well, it just, maybe they can adjust it and fix it, because you and I have been in agreement. These exemptions oh, that Nancy it. Pelosi pulled off are, are a travesty it, to us. I, it's just, it's insulting to all of us. Well, this is a law that we're going to pass, but my friends are not going to be bound that's by it. it. You that, apply that to was, the government for exemptions. That was unconscionable. And which are given on political that, grounds. That run her out of office for it. It was awful. Let me read you another another interesting you know thing. That, well, then she comes from that loony bin in San Francisco where everything they do just makes you scratch your head. Are they all smoking that stuff? I thought it was just a few of them. Not everybody in San Francisco. Not everybody. Nutty. There's just a, more nuts out there. Yeah. That, that, enough, they, to, enough to hold yeah. the majority. I, I, I just, the best thing we could do for the Democratic Party would be to tell her, you need to go, you know, you, you've, you've done about everything you can do to cause disgrace to the Democratic Party. You've overreached. You, you've profited off of stocks. You've used the Air Force for your own private you know, family get-togethers. I mean, it just, and, and her stuff is awful. I just, awful. And then she's granted all these exemptions to her friends. But here's another point. Collectively, Americans spent, listen to this, this is astounding to me, $2.5 trillion on health care in 2009, accounting for 17.6% of the nation's GDP. economy. Amazing. We spend more than other nations and have worse outcomes. Now, and within the next decade, it is anticipated spending on health care will nearly double. Yeah. Holy it's a smokes. Crisis. Yeah. Ah. What are you going to do? So, and they say, well, you can't ration. The Republicans don't have an answer. I mean, they're nibbling around. Well, you can buy it across state lines and a lot of tort reform. That That is it's not going to do anything. It's simplistic. It's, it, it, those are simplistic answers from both parties. They don't parties, have an answer. From both parties. Well, and he, this was interesting to me that in the seven states that tried this compulsory coverage right. for people with pre existing conditions, all those systems failed because either the insurers went out of business or they jacked the yeah. rates up to the point where they couldn't pay. You go, you go get insurance the minute you get sick. And, and, they, and that was one of the big knocks on it. And then they tried Massachusetts. And Massachusetts was successful because of the mandatory coverage. Yeah. And so they looked at these different state yeah. plans and they said, 
we, this is such a national phenomenon that you can't have all the states have different plans. Everybody said, well, everybody, now, all the states can have different plans. And at first, when I first heard that, I thought, well, that's possible, but there's no way to do it because the only way it works for people with pre-existing conditions and to cover everybody is you've got to force everybody to buy insurance or have some kind of a penalty. I, is it a good plan? No, that's not the only way it works. Well, another, another way it works is yeah. just to have nationwide single-payer coverage. Well, I agree with that. And, but we can't do There's not enough There's not the, not the political no. will to do it. Do you want to talk about the broccoli example? Oh, you're dying to talk about it. I am dying to talk about it. Because the that. Republicans have get, say, saying, well, if you can be forced to buy health insurance, you can be forced to eat broccoli because that'll make you healthy. Yeah. Now, Bob thinks that, that the Justice Ginsburg has destroyed She's got, that. She has the, I think she has the answer. All right. <clears throat> she says, this is at page 29, the Chief Justice cites a government mandate to purchase green vegetables. One could call this concern the broccoli horrible. Congress, the Chief Justice posits, might adopt such a mandate, reasoning that an individual's failure to eat a healthy diet, like the failure to purchase health insurance, imposes costs on others. Mm -hmm. Consider, she said, the chain of inferences the court would have to accept to conclude that a vegetable purchase mandate was likely to have a substantial effect on the health care costs borne by Americans. The court would have to believe that individuals forced to buy vegetables would then eat them instead of throwing or giving them away, would prepare the vegetables in a healthy way, steamed or raw, not deep fried, would cut back on unhealthy foods and would not allow other factors such as lack of exercise or little sleep to trump the improved diet. Such piling of inferences upon inferences is just what the court refused to do, and she cites a case, mm -hmm. Lopez versus Morrison, okay? And I think, it was, I think it was an argument that was made that you hear on the radio talk shows, and it's an argument that has a really good ring to it. By God, the government can make you buy broccoli, and they'll make you do this, and they'll make you do that. Not a good argument, well, really, not a good argument. It's gotten to be a better argument now because of this opinion. Here's why. <coughs> Justice Roberts said it's beyond the power of the Commerce Clause. I mean, as far as the Commerce Clause has gone, the, the national government can do everything, can, can regulate commerce, regulate, and they talk about what the word regulate means, regulate to make regular, to make it according to rules, commerce between the states and Indian tribes. And the Commerce Clause, which used to mean just transmission of goods, and then it meant manufacturing, and then it eventually meant everything, water in your toilet and everything else. But they restricted and it. In they some. restricted it. They said. Some. They said. Not in, in this case, though. In the gun you, case at schools, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. That's case. Lopez. Yeah, yeah. They, and they, they said, if you know, we have never gone so far as to make something commerce by forcing you to do it and then regulating it after we forced you to do it. That's a pretty good argument. So the the Roberts Court and the people who lined up with him said, you cannot do it under the Commerce Clause. So he said, then you need to go to their second argument, which is it's a tax. Let's talk about the Commerce Clause just quickly. Okay. Because Ginsburg says that this is not regulating inactivity because the individual is going to be in the health care system. You could say that an individual that is required to buy an electric car, well, okay, but they're not required to buy it because they might not decide to drive a car. In other words, there's, they're not guaranteed to be in that system mm -hmm. at some point. She says at some point in time, you're going to be in the health care system. So if you elect, elect to be self-insured, that is an act that directly affects the health care delivery. Your election to be self-insured and not pay into a system at any time until you're sick yeah. or until you need the coverage. That, so it's a decent... You're still a, working around the idea that yeah. you're regulating inactivity. Well, that, her, her comment is it's not inactivity because they make an election to become self-insured and that that is activity, well, sufficient the, activity. The, 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 but, the dissent you know. addresses that. And yeah. maybe, maybe we're getting too far into, no. into the... No, but you, you were finished. I, I, I interrupted you. You, um, you, went out, you went out with Rob's okay. going to the taxing well, situation. Well, now we, now we yeah. go to the tax situation. Yeah. But what an odd tax. The, you, you can have uh, direct taxes, and there's some stuff in the Constitution about direct taxes. There are right. income taxes, which are based on income, and then excise taxes based on a product. And they don't give much attention to, well, what kind of a tax is it? Yeah. Well, it is a tax on not doing something. It's an odd kind of tax. So if, if the government has the power to impose a tax on not doing something, why wouldn't it have the power to impose a tax on not 
eating broccoli or not having the appropriate body mass index or not buying an electric car. Why, why would you, what, what cuts off that reasoning at the Affordable Care Act? Do you think that Roberts, and he is obviously very smart, do you think he wrote this in a way to point out the absurdity of the only possible argument, kind of a very clever— Yeah, but he bought it. But, but a very clever way of saying yeah. it, that is, he knocked out the Commerce Clause argument, which I think almost everybody thinks— on the, dis on, the, uh, on the majority that, w that weren't with him on the Commerce Clause is that the Commerce Clause argument, his, his position on it's wrong. One of the things Justice Ginsburg says is, why did we spend all these pages talking about the Commerce Clause that was not applicable? I mean, he's like, we blew away the Commerce Clause. Yeah. Why do we go to this extreme? But the, the point, but your, your point that it's a tax, I think, is a really good point. Why, why couldn't you tax any kind of inactivity? I mean, I do think it's an excellent point where I don't think the Commerce That's Clause is That's now the law that of the good. land. Yeah, yeah, it is. That the national government now has the power to tax inactivity. Do you think it's enough on the political issue? Do you think it's enough to mobilize the populace to rise up against Obama because of the health care? Do you think it's going to do that what, or no, not? No, I don't think so. I think people are, sh people are short-sighted, and they're looking out for, number one, the reptile theory. Right. And and what the Democrats are doing now? See, wouldn't isn't it wonderful to have your children up to 26 on your health plan? Well, that, that's nice. I kind of like that. Isn't it wonderful that you don't have to worry about pre-existing conditions? That you have a kid with asthma, they can't charge that kid anymore just because he has asthma, which stands the whole idea of insurance on its head. But but it does. and people say, well, I like that. Yeah. And and nobody ever gets around to the point of, well, isn't that gonna isn't insuring my kid up to 26 going to cost my employer more? And won't my employer then have less money to give me in wages? Or won't my employer then be inclined to say, well, I'm going to ditch my plan. I'll pay the penalty and, and off not, you and go. And not have it, yeah. And certain employers, what's, what's, do you remember the number? Certain employers are small enough where they don't have to provide. Yeah, it's under 50, I think. Something like that. Yeah, under 50. It's under us. Yeah. Let's ditch our health plan and protest and save the money and spend it on expensive yeah, cars. Yeah, it's, a, it's a problem. This is a good plan. Yeah, it's a good problem. A good problem to have. That is that... How, how are we going to provide for our employees that's not required by the government? I think it's going to be difficult now. You know, it, it, it is an odd way to do it, to have it come through employers. It's, it's encouraged by the fact that we get, we're providing something for our employees that isn't a tax to them and is a business expense for us. And it's in, so we're encouraged to do it. And the bulk buying, <laughs> in theory anyway, yeah. gives you some leverage yeah. in the marketplace. And, and under... under employer-provided plans, they will cover conditions even if they pre-exist. So we can't ask when we hire somebody, <coughs> we can't inquire about any pre-existing condition. Well, we condition. can't inquire about that for another reason, but, but if they show up with a pre-existing condition, our Blue Cross plan can't say, no, we're not paying for that, because it's this group plan, you're in. Oh. they got to pay me for it. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, no application, they're just in. They're just in. Mm -hmm. Well, right, we'll be back in just a minute. Within reason, Bob and Bill, so stay with us. And we are back for 20 more minutes when we come back.